Okay, let's uh, let's pray and then we'll start. Right? Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for Lord being with us throughout, uh, Lord, this course. Lord, you've been, Lord, uh, helping us, Lord, through this journey. God, we thank you. Father, we thank you that um, you are with us even in our, as uh, strongly, God, you are in our uh, today, Lord, in our, all our todays, God, you are in our tomorrows as well. So you're the God of the, our future, we thank you. And Lord, we pray even as we, Lord, entrust ourselves into your mighty hands, Lord, we know that you are, you will continue to lead us into all that you have for us, Lord. We just want to thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. So, um, if we last class, I think we looked at... Uh, uh, cultural intelligence and how we need to be sensitive to the culture. Uh, and before that, we looked at uh, emotional intelligence, the the, uh, the awareness of our own selves and the regulation, you know, uh, how we can regulate our own emotions, uh, no matter who we are temperamentally, you know, that will really help us, not only ourselves professionally, but also the uh, entire team, right? Um, so we looked at that. So today, let's look at uh, this topic called change. And if possible, we'll also look at one more topic, which is continuous learning, which is actually related to this, right? So change, okay? So how many of us like change? Just wanted to ask. You know, how many of you like change? You don't like to do the same thing over and over again. Just one second, sorry. Um, how many of you like change? You know, there are some people who, when they go to their restaurant, you know, maybe some uh, hotel, favorite place, they order the same thing from the menu, right? They don't like to order anything else because this... This is what they are comfortable with. This is what they, they've tried. They don't they don't want to try out the other things. They are comfortable with this. And they order the same thing. Okay. Or you know, it could change. Uh, they don't want to change what they are used to. Okay. Right? Okay. Kiran says she wants she likes to change and progress. Yeah. That's good. So the thing is, we need to understand that change is a part of life. Okay, like somebody said, uh, the only thing that is constant in this world is change. Right. So, which means that if there's one one thing that is going to be the same in this world, and that is this thing called change. You know, um, which 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 just means goes on to uh, mean that change is something that is inevitable, unavoidable, and that is something which is going to be there. Uh, you know, no matter uh, you know, uh, no matter what, there will be change. Okay. So the thing is that as human beings, we are creatures of habit, whether we like it or not. Okay, uh, and good habits are you know are essential for us you know certain disciplines are essential for us necessary for us okay certain things we need to it's good that certain things are consistent in our lives and constant in our lives right but we also as much as we are creatures of habit you know we'd like to get up at a certain time we like to do things at a certain time we also need to understand that all around us there is change happening Okay. The world is changing um, all around us. There is change. So we also need to adapt to change. Right? We also need to change. We also need to adapt to change. And we need to have a mindset that, uh, that can adapt to change, right? that can um, deal with change. Right? So we, it's, it's very, very important. Um, so I'm just going to share a little bit from uh, from the book Change. You might have read it uh, from the APC book Change. Um, you know, so I'm just going to sh share uh, some thoughts from there, and then we will uh, we will 
look at uh, the other topic as well. Okay, so let's uh, let's look at so change. You know, it denotes either an event or a process that causes things to be different from how they are currently. Okay, it denotes a event or a process. So it could be a one-time thing, or it could be a process, a series of things that are different from how they are currently. So today, well, this is how we are doing ministry, maybe, or this is how we are doing our work. But then it might not necessarily be the same tomorrow. Like, for example, you know, you just look at transportation. Right? Some years back, uh, the mode of transportation was, of course, um, or the way we moved from place to place. Like, we had, uh, we had buses, we had uh, trains, we had planes and locally if you want to move around in a place you had an auto rickshaw you had you know, maybe taxis but even within that you know the way we use auto rickshaws or the way we use taxis was very different right so we uh, we used to uh, stop a taxi or, a, or you know taxis with first of all taxis they were not too many taxis only in airports or you know, railway stations, and they would used to, they used to charge quite a bit. So we avoided taxis, we would rather go by bus or auto rickshaws. Then uh, when we when we tried using an auto rickshaw, we would always, you know, go and we had to negotiate, we had to speak to the person, we would say, okay, I'm going from, uh, you know, from railway station to Henur Cross. Okay. So the person would uh, you know, either he would put a meter and he would sometimes say, if it's based on the time, you know, it's you give me one and a half, you give me more, uh, you know, give me double the meter, right? I'm, I'm sure, you know, we've all of us have experienced that if you lived in Bangalore or, you know, as Bible college students, I'm sure, you know, from <clears throat> the Bible college to central or so wherever you had to go, you experienced that. Or sometimes he'd say, no meter, you give me flat rate, he'll say 200 rupees, okay, no meter. Why it was late in the night or early in the morning? It's a you're not using meter. And the the way we used that the auto rickshaw changed when 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 we had these uh, online booking apps, either Uber or Ola, right? Now you the way you you just had to book it. You put in the where you are, where you need to go, and there was a, there was a rate. <laughs> last night you okay. Last week you had this kind of yeah. So uh, some places, you know, where you have Ola, and there's no negotiation. You know, just uh, day before yesterday, I, I used Ola, and I, I had to go from a railway station to another place. And uh, the person, you know, it was coming to some 31 rupees, right, uh, close by. But the person says, you need to give me 20 rupees more. Okay, even there, you know. But the fact is that the minimum was already set. It was already set. This is how it is. So it became very convenient. Right, so that's a change from the way we used. There was a lot of resistance to change, in the sense, you know, when when first when these Ola and Uber and all these uh, you know, call taxis which we had, you know, you call a number and the taxi. There was a lot of change. There was a lot of resistance from those who were already operating. Right, there was from the already present cab drivers or auto rickshaw drivers. There was a lot of resistance from the unions. From the cab drivers union auto rickshaw right? what was the resistance they said we should not have this because it'll be it'll mean a change in the way they were working it'll be a change in the kind of revenue that they were getting okay so now auto rickshaw could no more demand the 200 rupees like last night i came from cantonment railway station to my house in hbr layout and the auto you know the, i used ola auto and it came to 99 rupees like earlier for the same distance, uh, the, the auto rickshaw would charge 150, 250, you know, 300. You just look at my face and say, okay, 300. Maybe this guy is from out of station, so I can charge him 300. But, you know, then I start speaking to him in Canada, then he'll bring it down and you know, all this. Now, you see the change. There was also a resistance to change. Okay, so similarly for us as uh, human beings, when things change, there is al always a resistance. We want to, we don't want to change, right? We, we because we are used to it. We are comfortable with a certain way of doing things. We are comfortable with certain benefits that we are getting. 
out of the way we're doing things so we don't want to change but we need to understand that change is something that we cannot avoid change is important for our lives personally and corporately right um in fact if you look at our own spiritual life it is a life of change no it is a life of change constant process a continuous process of change um you know if you look at uh, this verse let me just share that verse um second corinthians chapter 3 and verse 18 we all with unveiled face beholding as in a mirror the glory of the lord are being transformed okay in other words it means changed into the same image from glory to glory just as by the spirit of the lord okay so what is happening to us is constant change we are being changed we are being transformed into that same image we becoming more and more christ like so which means that change is part of our spiritual growth our spiritual life as believers and it is very very important and necessary to come to a place of maturity you know if you're going to say i'm going to be in that same place you know i will remain in the same place i will remain in the same state that i am then we cannot move or progress into greater levels of christ likeness greater levels of spiritual maturity walking in greater levels of anointing you know all that is not possible if we don't change right so it involves change it involves um moving from maybe childishness we need to be childlike in our faith childlike in our beliefs the way we believe god but we need to move from childlike childishness to maturity and even greater levels of maturity right so in other words god does not want us to become stagnant in life okay so that's that's something that we need to understand okay what is being stagnant means it's it's being still right in one place there is no movement now god desire that for us the answer is no because we see that god wants us to move from glory to glory and so you know change is something very very important okay so there, therefore the thing is for us to understand that change is important not only in our spiritual life but also in all other aspects of our lives you know when it comes to our personality when it comes to our behavior when it comes to our understanding of things when it comes to skill you know uh, our understanding of finances our plans goals everything you know everything grows everything changes and and our god is interested in all aspects of our lives which involve you know for the you know our understanding of him this involves our spiritual life and growth definitely there's no doubt about it but god is also interested in how we live our lives the skills that we have the still skills the skills that we are uh, you know receiving and getting good at uh, maybe our the way we do professionally the way we do ministry you know how we do things uh, at home you know with regard to family and marriage and and children and parenting and so on you know god is interested and all other areas you know how we handle our money right god is interested in that because god is god of everything when it comes to our lives so uh you know as maybe a student god would want us to grow in our learning in our growing our understanding as a minister of god god would want us to grow in the way we do ministry in the way we you know maybe in our in our preaching in our te- teaching in our ministering right in and you you definitely want us to move um, to greater levels of of u- of using the spiritual gifts and greater levels of anointing and so on so um so it all you know it all uh, is linked to change okay 
So thing is, uh, let's look at a few areas where we need to change some fundamentals you know, so that it can affect change as a whole. Right? It can affect change in other areas. So, so the thing is that we need to uh, desire change or we need to be changed in our motives and in our desires. Motives. So very basic things. You know. Motives. Why am I doing what I am doing? What am I desiring in life? There needs to be change. Okay. And we need to desire change in that. We need to, our motives need to change from fleshly motives in order to move on to motives that are in God, spirit led. Right? Our desires, again, you know, are they stirred up? Are they brought about? Because of, are they carnal in nature? Are they fleshly, earthly, temporal? Or are they eternal? Are they with the wisdom of God? Right. So what are our motives like? Motives and desires. So in that area, we need to desire change and we need to be changed. We need to change. Okay. So that's why, uh, you know, in scripture we see, let a man examine himself. You know, this is in relation to communion the Lord's Supper, the Lord's table. Uh, but Paul gives that instruction. He says in 1 Corinthians 11 and verse 28, let a man examine himself. So we need to examine what is my motive, what is my desire? Uh, what are my desires? What is my motive, motive for doing this? So if it is carnal, then I need to change. I need to change my motive. I need to change my desire. Okay, so there also needs to be change in our thinking in our attitude in our speech and conduct okay so, so typically we are just looking at how we need to change in that area okay um, romans 12 2 says do not be conformed to this world but be transformed by the renewing of your mind okay so what is that we need to be renewed in our thinking the first part of romans chapter 12 and verse 2 okay let me put it here do not be conformed to this world but be transformed again the word transform meaning change be transformed in the renewing of your mind so you know if uh, when it comes to our thoughts when it comes to our attitudes when it comes to our speech and behavior there needs to be change okay there needs to be change so um, we need to desire change First of all, and we need to we need to, you know, uh, constantly see change in this areas, see change in our thoughts. Now, you know, the, th the thing is, as we think, so are we. You know, what is it that is occupying our thoughts? Is what will come out in our speech, in our behavior, in the decisions that we make. You know, what is it that our mind is full of? Is what will come out. So if we need a change in our the way we live our life, the way we speak, the way we, you know, the way we behave, there needs to be change in our thinking. There needs to be change. We cannot expect to change our behavior. We cannot expect to change our speech. You know, we cannot expect to change our life without changing what we think. Right? Without changing what goes on in our minds, we need to be aware and we need to intentionally change. Right. So if we want change in our behavior, if we want change in our life, if we want change in the way we do things, there needs to be change in our thinking. What are we feeding our mind with day in and day out? Right. Now, now we need to be careful because we have a lot of things at our disposal, right? A lot of things in our hand are available for us. Social media, things on the internet, right? Um, the messages that we get on social, in social media, right? On Instagram or Facebook, people post a lot of things, right? It seems like good wisdom. It seems like that is good for your life, you know, but it is 
we need to be careful you know is it does it have its foundation in truth which is the word of god right is there truthfulness to that statement uh, is there you know is there anything beneficial in that statement right or does it seem like wisdom but it do, does not have the power i see so we need to uh, we need to be discerning we need to be aware of it um so change is uh, in our thinking change in our behavior change in our speech it's again something that we need to be looking at intentionally have i changed in my thinking have i changed in the way i speak and relate to people is it changed for the better of course or as a change for the worse right um so it's important that we change because god is looking for change god is looking for transformation and uh, change is something that we need to be tuned into right something that we need to welcome in our lives change for the better of course you know we're always talking about that change for the better transformation for the better of our lives right um this is something that we always need to look into and intentionally welcome into our own lives okay so it could be you know change in the way we do ministry maybe right um it could it could be in the way we have been doing ministry now you know that the way we are the world is doing ministry the world the way the world is doing business for example has changed right because of the pandemic the way the way money is being used has changed the way money is transacted has changed right um i'm sure that some of you um, all of you could have used google pay sometime or the other right where you are not really exchanging currency notes but you're doing a online it's just an online electronic transfer right and and that's how transactions are making the world is changing because um because of the way things are right because of the challenges of the pandemic the changes brought in by the pandemic uh, more and more e transfers or electronic transfers of of uh, financials finances is taking place that there is no physical exchange of money but it's done online okay so there is the way in, in physically the way in which people are doing business has changed right people things like working from home things like you know remote working which is actually enabled which is uh, a lot of advantages you can work from anywhere in the world uh, for an organization which could be anywhere in the world right um, and not really meet physically with the person but you know that's how it is so if if i'm not open to the idea or if i'm not open to that way of working or if i don't have the skills for that kind of working or transaction then i lose out then i miss out right like for example you know if if the person says you know i prefer you know money being transacted in this manner let's say it could be a landlord right it could be uh, someone to whom you're paying rent and that person says oh, you do the e transfer that's you know that's thing i don't want cash now either we need to know how to do that you know and if you have learned how to do that that's fine but there are you know there could be people who are still not you know don't know how to do that you know, don't know how to maybe download an app and use it or you know use google pay or use an online transfer transaction now that means it, it does not mean that they cannot survive they can but it makes life that much more difficult right um and uh, slowly uh that avenue might be cut off completely right so uh so a person who does not change to adapt to this way of working gets left behind right it's unable to do things it becomes more and more difficult for that person right so an upgradation of skill and ability is important to deal with the change that's happening okay um so we are looking at you know change uh, when it comes to even the way we do ministry uh, 
uh, maybe we need to upgrade understand learn unlearn certain things and say okay we are going to use this method we are going to use these means in order to you know do ministry so that means a, uh, you know we need to have a, a mindset to adopt to change adapt to change sorry to adopt to change and adapt to change so it means that okay you know sunday morning let's do this now right so we cannot say hey we have always done this um, therefore let's continue to do the same way okay so what will happen um, we are losing out right we are missing out on maybe reaching out a few people okay we are missing out on passing information through a very important means we are missing out on that because we have refused to adapt to change okay so change uh, being welcome to change being open to change is very very important having a mindset right um okay so another area uh, is that you know we need to uh, adapt change or embrace change uh, which is very very important for progress which is also important for increase okay which means uh, being effective being productive we need to uh we need to be open it's it becomes necessary change becomes necessary okay. so whatever is not helping us keep up with that change whatever is holding us back things that keep us stagnant and you know we've seen that okay change is necessary for progress okay uh whether it's personal progress whether it's progress of the team whether it's progress in all areas of our life change is necessary so if there are things that are keeping us stagnant we must be aware we must deal with it okay sometimes it could be just my attitude okay with my attitude and i'm not open to change i'm saying that this is how we will do it okay so you know what will what will actually um uh, prevent us from changing you know are some some things in our uh in our attitude in our motive um and which which actually keeps us stagnant which keeps us which prevents us um from making that change okay. so uh, we need to we need to actually stop doing that uh, we need to avoid uh, doing certain things um and we need to make those changes ourselves right internally we need to make those changes um and only then can we progress because it's necessary for change it is necessary for progress it is necessary for improving things right so um one of the things that uh, that could actually um you know prevent things from changing is fear okay because uh, we 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 maybe we are comfortable and we fear being different okay let's so let me just put that out here maybe it is fear okay. because we are so used to routine so used to things being comfortable you know and uh, and this actually creates some kind of fear because it's different okay Uh, i remember the first time you know when email was there and uh, we really didn't know anything about email uh, my wife and i and uh, you know there was this internet uh, cafes right where you could go we didn't have an email id even so uh, it was just that that fear of that unknown you know what is it you know i don't have inf- i don't know how to do this um i don't know how to do it and i don't want to mistake i don't know want to make a mistake so for a long time we didn't even think of creating an email id okay then we said okay uh, uh, actually a relative uh, my wife's relative actually said hey you guys don't have an email you need to have one let me create one for you so this is what it is and she showed us how it was done and how and uh, and then we ventured out you know so what really kept us was fear uh, or the discomfort you know of something new i don't want to try it out i don't want to you know now this email thing is a simple thing but let's say it needs to be a uh, you know a completely different way of doing things 
you know, a way of making pavements, payments, maybe a way of financial transactions, a way of doing ministry, right? It requires dealing with this thing of fear of change, fear of the unknown, fear of the uncomfortable things, right? Sometimes what happens is that um, uh, there is a sense of being overwhelmed. Okay, let me just put that. Or being stressed out. Then it says before also, yeah. You don't know about email ID. Yeah, that's true. So all of us, you know, we start from that place and then we 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 change, right? Okay, so maybe the change brings about a sense of being overwhelmed and causes stress. Yeah, that is true. Okay, um, that is very, very possible because uh, you know it means that we need to learn. It means change means that to be able to change means that I need to be able to learn. I might have to put in some effort. Okay, change requires effort. Let me just put it here. Okay, so the effort could be in the in the area of. Um, learning something okay. uh, it could be in the area of adapting something so it requires effort okay now we could have some kind of stress or we could feel overwhelmed because i don't know right or stress because of this extra effort that needs to be put in right um so so that's the thing right or it could also mean that uh, we are so comfortable in what we call as status quo. What is status quo? The way things are. Similar to, uh, you know, the, the first one, the fear. Uh, now here, in the sense, when you say I'm comfortable with status quo, I'm saying that I'm very, very perfectly okay. I don't see a reason to change. I'm okay with status quo. I'm okay with the way things are, right? Um, and we don't, we, which means that we, we have not really seen the necessity for change, right? We've not understood the, the importance or the gravity of that importance, okay? So many times what happens is, you know, even, even when we look at businesses, a lot of businesses shut down or are not able to continue because they have not adapted to change, okay? Uh, if they are not adapting to change, now they cannot, they'll be irrelevant, okay? And uh, they they have to shut down the business, okay? Let's say, you know, how many of you have uh, used, uh, you know, cameras with film? Camera with, uh, you know, that 35 mm film. Can I see your hands? You can just probably put your hands up. You've, Dave, you've used, okay. Anyone else? Cameras with film. No one else? Because I'm, oh, you were not born in that generation. Okay, really? Okay, Aaron says no. Okay, I'm surprised. Okay. Kiran also no. Okay. Okay, so... Um, when when I when I was in college and I think uh, yeah uh, maybe in school also we we all we all all of us had uh, no so nothing you know uh, nothing digital was there right we, there was no digital camera uh, so it was film so you had a camera you had it loaded with a film thirty five mm film that will give you probably how many film photographs you can take thirty six photographs I'm not sure okay we ha we Okay, anyway, something something in the 36, I think, 36, 34. Uh, okay, Aaron is saying you used. Okay, fine. So, um, yeah, so you used to, you know, you had to load it with the film and 35, 36. So you need to really, you know, count your photographs, right? You need to make sure that, you know, that you really want it. So everybody, you know, you can't just take random photographs like how we take. So we take photographs and then you you once of uh, you know you're finished with the role film role you took that film role to a, 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 a studio or a photo center 
right? You had this Konica lab or Kodak lab or whatever, and you took it to the, uh, you know, to the to the person there, and then they would put it in an envelope. They'd say, okay, you come on this date, which would be, you know, two days after, and then you could go collect your thing. And you can also decide what size do you want your photographs. So, so that's how you had your physical photographs, you know, like it'll be four by six or something, some measurement, postcard size. And you had your photographs and you put it in an album. You know, you had a physical album, either you stuck it or you put it in this cover. And yeah, so you that's how you used it. Okay. So now suddenly there came this whole thing of digital cameras. Okay. So digital cameras. So this these studios, they had these photo things. You know, they also were selling these digital cameras side by side. Okay. So they were selling equipment for the digital camera, um, et cetera. That was happening for some time. And then came the smartphones. Okay, then came the smartphones. Uh, initially, it was the iPhone, which had that option of taking photographs and you could, ex you know, you could minimize the photos, you could, uh, you know, expand the photos and uh, you had the touch screen and you could just send photographs or, or text photographs, email photographs at an instant. Okay. Then came WhatsApp, and you could send texts and videos and audio files at an instant, right? So the iPhone came with that innovation. Then Samsung came, and then Samsung completely took over the market, you know, smartphone market. So everybody was carrying a Samsung phone, which could do this. So now everybody on their phones had cameras. Right? They could take pictures. It was not just 35, 36 pictures. They could take n number of things. They'll take 30 pictures in five five minutes. Right? You could take so many pictures. You can delete pictures and you uploaded it. You took it on a pen drive or you put it on a cloud. You put it on Facebook, Instagram, whatever. It became so simple. Okay, now what happened to that business of you know that films completely died out? Completely. Right? So that product was not used. Very few places, I, I don't know if they still you know, have those films, uh, film, film roles, and they don't have it anymore. It's not there. Right Now, let's say you had a studio which was only doing that, only doing film developing. Right Now, that business would have come down drastically because people don't take photos that way anymore. It is only digital cameras, right? Uh, maybe for innovation or for old time sake, they might have an old camera, but they've stopped using it because the quality is so, you know, not so great when it comes to digital cameras, where you can do a lot of things, you can brighten it, you can change the color, put filters, you can do a lot of things within seconds. So if, that business owner says, I will not change, right? I will not go into digital cameras or I have this space. Now I have to do something about it, you know, either use it as a studio or use it as something else. Now, if they don't change, that means that that's the end of that business. First of all, it will reduce the business by maybe half or one third or even less than one third, one fourth, you know, it'll, it'll drastically reduce the business, reduce the money that comes in. And at one point, you have to close down the business, right? You can't pay for your workers. You can't pay for uh, the, you can't pay the rent, pay the electricity, whatever. You can't pay for the raw material that you're using, the films. You cannot. Why? Because people are using smartphones. They will not come to the studio anymore right so unless that person changes then it's very difficult so you see change is necessary for growth change is necessary sometimes even to survive and be there change is necessary so you see the importance of change right in our own lives right so if i choose to be stagnant then it is not going to be productive. It is not going to be productive. Okay. So, but praise God, God is a God of change. 
like god is a god of change god is the one who you know who instituted this kind of you know this transformation this change um which happens in you know spiritually which happens when we look around and we see nature we see that there is change you know there are times and there are seasons and and god is the one who does that right so so for us the important thing is to be aware of it embrace that and say yes i need to be a person who embraces change who adapts to change and this change has to come in all areas of my life you know so we need to be uh, careful i'm not talking about changing the truth okay we're not talking about changing the truth of god's word god's word god never changes in that sense right uh, he never changes yesterday today forever this truth his character his nature uh, that never changes right but we live in a world that is constantly changing praise god his word never changes he never you know he is he is de- totally dependable he's not today he's not saying yes and today tomorrow he's saying maybe and the day after no no he's not that he is his promises are yes and amen like his word is the truth it never changes with time or difficulty or circumstance praise god for that right um is so dependable right and we need to have that same kind of character as god you know being dependable being faithful uh being constant in our being established in the truth the truth never changes but we need to understand that the world around us is constantly changing we are changing physically we are changing right and we are growing as we grow we change physically and we need to be able to adapt to change or sometimes even initiate change what does that mean adapt is okay some change is happening i make some adjustments and be part of that change right but when you say initiate change that means that i start the change intentionally saying hey this these things need to change in my life or the way i'm you know i'm doing maybe the way i'm ministering the way i'm um, you know doing my professionally the way i'm living the way I, my attitude my thinking my behavior all that needs to change because it's not bearing fruit it's not being productive so intentionally i need to change that as well right so either i can adapt to change or i can you know let me put that adapt to change uh or you know initiate change two different things i adjust or adapt to the changing environment or i need to you know sometimes i need to initiate change because change is required unless i initiate change um you know things will become stagnant things will die out things will become so unproductive that it will come to an end right so i need to you know as god leads us we need to initiate change bring about change in those areas so that there is productivity so that there is you know effectiveness effectiveness okay so yeah so those are some things that uh, we wanted to look at uh, when it came to change uh, and praise god we have the resources we have the word of god which brings about change we see the word of god is like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces right jeremiah 23 29 uh, we see that the word of god is like the fire that burns so you know the word of god the truth of god you know brings about that transformation to our thinking to our um, you know to our um, which which affects our speech and action and so on okay uh, but main thing is that we need to be we need to have that mindset to change and grow to change and transform to change and be effective okay because we cannot expect the same effort and expect different results right there has to be change in the effort or in the direction of our effort so that the result can be different right because if we put in the same effort or the same direction we are putting the same effort you know we will have the same kind of result um so we need to be able to change in that as well okay okay i think we'll stop here and uh, next class which will be our last uh, uh 
uh, session we look at uh, continuous learning you know this is linked to this you know similar to this the fact that we are we have to be you know open to change the same way we need to be open to learning um, things throughout our life you know, learning is not only when we are in college or when we are doing a particular course uh, but learning is something that happens continuously through all seasons of our lives okay so we'll look at that uh, next class uh, also just wanted to say there are two quizzes right um, so which you can uh, which will be released sometime this week and uh, you can finish that anytime before on or before the 26th okay so these are open open book tests uh, quizzes you can refer to the notes you can refer to the videos uh, and also answer them right okay fine thank you god bless you thank you sir right thank bye bye i'm see you thank you sir see you there bye bye